I'm Big Lou, and you're watching Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And today it's not barbecue. We're going to make some Natchitoches meat pies right here in my kitchen. I wanted to grill outside on my lodge kickoff grill, but it's raining, so I decided this would be a good day to do Natchitoches meat pies. I'm putting it up on Cast Iron Wednesday on June 2nd, the, theory, the thing for June. I was going to say theory. The theme for June is... Um, Breaded meats. Well, what better way to do breaded meats than stick meat in a pie crust? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Natchitoches meat pies, all right, for Cast Iron Wednesday. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. Before I do that, I've got some thank yous i got to show. One to Billy over at Strong's Adventure. He's got the best Lodge kickoff grill video on YouTube. And of course, I'm not cooking on the kickoff grill today because of the rain, but I will be cooking more on my kickoff grill later. But anyway, if you haven't seen his unboxing and review video of the Lodge kickoff grill, you better go watch his uh, video because um, don't watch mine because I don't know why you're watching mine now. You're going to be the only guy that tells you not to watch my channel or like it or subscribe to it or anything like that because I'm just a fool. Just a fella having fun with food, fire, and a phone camera in my backyard. And today, it's not even in my backyard. It's in my kitchen because it's raining. Did I tell you that? It's raining. <sighs> you talk too much, Big Lou. Let's do Natchitoches meat pies. I got some more thank yous to do, though. All right? We're going to end the Natchitoches meat pies. You got to have meat. All right, look at this. Ground pork. It says burka. Is... Did you see that? Have it defrosting and it dripped water and stuff. All right, anyway, ground pork. It's from uh, Berkwood Farms, but it came from Pasture Prime Farms where this beef came from. This is Wagyu ground beef. Wagyu ground beef, I know, from Pasture Prime Farms. Hey, the benevolent subscriber sent me that stuff. Thank you, Gregor. I don't want to tell y'all it's Gregor because I don't want to um, I want to leave the benevolent subscriber's name anonymous, so I'm not going to tell you it's Gregor, but he sent me some stuff from uh, Pasture Prime Farms, and some of it's ground pork, and some of it's ground beef, and that's what goes in Natchitoches meat pies. All right, it's cast iron Wednesday. I'm going to be cooking this in some vintage cast iron, and I want to thank the Providence Peddler. All right, I'll tell you more about him in just a minute. I had this old uh, three-notch lodge um, deep skillet chicken fryer. Um, my stepdad passed away in 2011. About a year later, I was at my mom's house, and we were cleaning up his old work shed. And this was found back there in the corner, rusted, pitted, nasty. I said, that's an old lodge three-notch chicken fryer, or deep skillet, as they might call it. All right, look at that. Number eight. Uno, dos, three. Three notches, all right? Yeah, lodge, all right? This lid, it fits lodge. I said, I'll try to clean it up. So I tried to clean it up with lye, oven cleaner, stuff like that. I couldn't, it's pitted bad. Uh, I couldn't get much of it done, but I got the rust off of it for the most part. Had one coat of seasoning on it. And then my wife and I, we moved to this lovely home here. And uh, I didn't get it back to my mom's season the way it was supposed to. Wound up sitting in my shed for about six years. I found it last summer and I was going to clean it up. And then tragedy struck uh, my home with hurricanes and uh, the passing of my wife and all kinds of things. I kind of neglected it. Well, this past spring, I found it sitting in my garage and I said, you know what? I'm going to get it cleaned up. It needs an electrolysis, an electrolysis tank. Electrolysis. E-tank. Yeah, that's what it needed, an e-tank. And you know who has one? Providence Peddler. Uh-huh. So I contacted Providence Peddler, and uh, I got this to him. He put it in his e-tank, and he seasoned it for me. Still pitted real bad. I wouldn't want to saute anything in it or anything like that. But I tell you what, it's good for deep frying. I have made popcorn with it, fried beignets with it the other day. I've uh, deep fried other stuff since I got this back from him earlier this spring. Old Three Notch Lodge chicken fryer. Yeah, pit it on the bottom. I could sand it smooth, but I don't want to remove any metal. All I'm going to do is use this for deep frying. And we're going to deep fry these uh, Natchitoches meat pies in this today. Three notch. Doesn't say made in the USA in it, so it makes me think it's at least from the 50s, okay? Uh, from what I can tell. All right, the next one. Ah, uh, I don't know. Lodge. Not sure. I know that this one belonged to my great aunt. Great, great aunt. My grandmother's aunt. Great, great aunt. All right. Um, look at that. Single notch right there at the top. Nothing on the bottom. No maker's mark right here. Raised eight on the handle. There's a little zero underneath it. Is that a maker's mark? 
Why is there a mark under the eight? Sort of a teardrop handle, kinda. That's what the back looks like. Here's what the back looks like and what we know is a large three notch. Handles are somewhat similar. Single notch lodge. Maybe not a lodge. I don't know. I always thought it was a lodge. I use this for um, making cornbread in. It's been in my possession for 20 something years. Never cooked on it with a stove, but I said there's a lot of crud on it, so I wanted to get cleaned up. And um, I thought Providence Peddler did such a good job on the E-Tank with the chicken fryer that he'd surely be able to do this one nice. Oh, and he did. The link down below to his Facebook page will be the link to where he's showing you the before and after pictures of this very skillet that's been in my possession since 2002. My grandmother used to make cornbread in it, and I believe it belonged to my great aunt. All right? But it had so much stuff on the back, I didn't know that it didn't have a maker's mark. I always assumed it was a single notch lodge with a raised eight. I couldn't see that little zero under it either because it had so much stuff on it. Weird. Look at that right there in the center. According to Providence Peddler, that may be a sprue mark. Now wait a minute, sprue marks were from the 18th century. That's the 1700s for those of you who can't count centuries, all right? Yeah, the 1700s, that's the 18th century. The 19th century is the 1800s, right? The 20th century is the 1900s, got it? We're in the 20, 21st century right now because it's the 20 hundreds. I don't know, 20 hundred ain't a word. The 2000s. All right, look. He said it might be a bottom pour. May have been a project like for the school shop class or something where they copied a lodge pattern. Measured across here, got 10, 10 and one eighth. They say lodge would have been 10 and one quarter from what we understand. No maker's mark right there. Maker's mark on the handle. I don't know. What do you say it is? Hey, Cast Iron Chaos, would you watch my channel and tell me what this is? Ah. Uh, I don't know, one of you other cast iron guys, Mr. Cast Iron, you know a lot about stuff, right? Would you watch this show and tell me what this is? I always thought it was a lodge. Now that it's cleaned up, I'm not sure. But now that he's got it cleaned up, I'm not afraid to use it on my stove and we're gonna brown the meat in this number eight, raised eight, single notch, possibly lodge. I went to castirongcollector.com. If you like cast iron and you're watching this, it's Cast Iron Wednesday, you're probably watching it. So it might be a southern mystery skillet. They claim to seem to think that only Lodge is the one that did the notches. First the single notch at the 12 o'clock position across from the handle, and then the um, three notches. This is a single notch. And, um, but they would have had a maker's mark. Said so the southern mystery sk skillets all had a, a solid uh, um, heat ring. That one has, definitely has a notch in it right there. All right. Where's the camera lens? Right there. See, it's got a notch. So, I don't know. Good skillet. Made macaroni and cheese in it last night. Gonna make Natchitoches meat pies today. So that's the vintage iron, all right? Three notch deep fryer. Number eight, possibly single notch lodge skillet. Maybe not, I don't know, early. <sighs> Probably dates to the late 20s or early 30s, knowing that it belonged to my great, great aunt. It's at least 90 years old, whatever make it is. We gonna cook Natchitoches meat pies in that. Run on for eight minutes. So I wanna tell you, I'm not gonna make the, the pie crust on the show. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link down below to the official Natchitoches meat pie recipe. You can find a lot of Natchitoches meat pie recipes, okay? Uh, it's got the pie crust recipe. It's basically biscuit dough with eggs in it. You roll it out real thin. But I paid the grocery store about two and a half bucks to make pie crust for me. So that's what I'm gonna use, okay? That's gonna save you some time on watching my video as well. All right, uh, other things we're gonna need in here, bell pepper. I'm gonna use a red one, green one will do. Most commonly it's green one. Whole head of garlic, pot of garlic, whatever you wanna call it. All the little cloves inside the little head of garlic, pot of garlic. All right, bunch of green onions. According to my grocery store, that's half a dozen of them, right? All right, yep, half a dozen uh, green onions, okay? And an onion. All right, I'm gonna get all these vegetables chopped up and uh, meet you over at the stove as we do the ground pork and the ground beef and get it all browned up. Also, Nick calls for a tablespoon, of, a teaspoon rather, of shortening. Uh, I don't have shortening. I've got some tallow. I've got some lard that I've rendered out and made myself. I've got some bacon grease saved and I got some ghee that I made. Uh, this is the clarified butter. Um, I didn't make the butter or milk the cow or anything. I just took the sticks from the store and 
clarified it. And I'm probably gonna use clarified butter instead of shortening, all right? You also need um, salt and pepper and red pepper. I didn't grow a garden this year, but I got a little bit of cayenne left from my garden last year. And so we're gonna use that. That's all to taste. And I'll talk more about Natchitoches meat pies, all right? Take a breath. I've been talking a long time and you've been listening for 10 minutes. You ready? Let's talk about Natchitoches meat pies. My daughter just graduated from the prestigious Louisiana School for Math, Science, and the Arts. It's a boarding school, a charter school up there for the really smart kids because my daughter's really smart. Just bragging. Just bragging. <sighs> anyway, she just graduated. She's going to go to Louisiana Tech in the fall. And um, Natchitoches is sort of up in the northern partish of Louisiana, north central part of Louisiana. And uh, Natchitoches, now, it, you know how to spell it, right? It's spelled just like it sounds, Natchitoches. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to spell it? Well, you ain't from around here, are you, boy? I'm going to put it right there on the screen. Right there on the screen. All right? Or what? Right there. I don't know which way it's reading. Natchitoches. Just like it sounds. Natchitoches. Meat pies. Uh, some people call them empanadas. Some people call them pierogies. Some people call them dumplings. Some people call them... Um, you know, whatever, but meat pies, Natchitoches meat pies, and Natchitoches is famous for them. Now, I got it spelled right there on the screen in case you want to put it into your Googler machine to find out about Natchitoches meat pies, all right? Natchitoches, not only the oldest town in Louisiana, it is the oldest city in the entire Louisiana purchase. Yeah, so all you other states that were purchased from for, in the Louisiana purchase, Arkansas, all your rest of them, yeah, Natchitoches, the oldest city, mm -hmm. older New Orleans, the oldest city, mm -hmm. Natchitoches, and they're famous for the meat pies. Yeah, like Philly's famous for their cheesesteaks, and New York's famous for their cheesecakes. Natchitoches got meat pies. We're going to do that. You don't care about it being the oldest town? Ah, you know what Natchitoches is famous for. That's where they shot that movie, Still Magnolias. All Southern women love the movie, Still Magnolias. That's like the... Um, Still making the Southern woman, uh, what in the world is that beeping? I got something on the stove over yonder. Yeah, Still Magnolias, yeah. You know what made Still Magnolias a better movie? If they'd called it Cast Iron Magnolias. Let's get these meat pies made. Well, I'm sorry you missed it. I put in a, a tablespoon of this ghee. You can see where I got the tablespoon out of there. And um, dumped in the pork meat, which is right here. And the beef, which is right there, and I didn't have the camera rolling, but it's rolling now, so let's get this all browned up. I'll put one of these handles on there. That way I can touch the skillet. Well, we'll speed things up as we brown it up. That's the lid to that chicken fryer, that deep skillet. It fits that number eight uh, skillet, whether it's a lodge or not. Brown that meat till there's no pink inside it, and then we're going to put in all the vegetables. That's the onion, the bell pepper, uh, the green onion, and the garlic, and we mix it all in there. Do not drain the meat. That's key to the recipe. Cook this in that uh, fat and drippings and everything from the... Uh, beef and pork that's in there and we're going to cook those uh, vegetables till they get real soft i'm gonna keep them covered with that lid from that chicken fryer all right open it up for frequently and um stir it around but then cover it back up and we're just going to continue to cook till they're done and that's looking about right it's time to drain and season okay let's have a peek at this oh yeah it's looking good uh it's all all the onions are translucent and all the vegetables are soft and uh it is time to drain it. Here's how I'm gonna drain it. You may need to use a strainer or a colander or whatever, but I'm just gonna put the lid on it like that. Remember, this is a lodge lid. May not be a lodge skillet, but this is an induction stove, so it's okay for me to do this right here, okay? Right there on the stove top. I wouldn't do this if you've got a regular glass top, but because this is an induction stove, it's not burning. It's not burning that Pyrex glass. So I'm just going to drain it just like that. All right. Now it's time to season it. Going to throw in some black pepper. I want a lot. And I'm going to turn this heat off too.
The recipe will be down below. So you can see how much is recommended. But basically it's to taste. Basically it's to taste. Pink salt, because that's what's in here. You don't have to use pink salt. Cayenne that I grew last year. I'll have to store buy, store buy some now because uh, I didn't plant a garden this year. I like a fair mint, a fair amount. All right. Let's get all this mixed through there and incorporate it in. All right, I just tested it and it's close. I want to add just a little bit more red pepper, just a little more black pepper. The salt is right. You do you. If you don't want it as spicy. Now, I will tell you, when you go to Natchitoches, they're kind of mild. Now, once you got your season mixed in, you want to put in a thing of flour. By the way, I do have the heat off at this point. The skillet's just retaining the heat because it's cast iron, and that's how cast iron works. And you want to stir this flour in and mix it in, not really making a roux, just kind of, this flour's there to kind of thicken things up and kind of gel everything together. So kind of get the flour all mixed in. And then we're ready to start filling meat pies. All right, now this recipe calls, says it makes about 18 pies. Well, that depends on how big your little pie cutter thing is. I'm using this little glass bowl. If you use a cereal bowl, then it's a little bigger pies than that. You make them the size you want to. If it's your baby, you spank it. So you just take a, thing and you cut a few crusts like this. All right, you wanna save as much crust as you can. And um, I'm not gonna make all 18. I'll save that meat mixture for another day or another project or do a baked pie with it, um, baked meat pie with it. All right, so this, each pie crust is gonna make about three. And so you would need, uh, you know, half a dozen, uh, pie crust to make all 18, I guess. All right, I will tell you that I was able to get four and then take the little scraps, roll it out with a rolling pin, and now I can get five per pie crust. So that'll give you a key as to how many you can make with one pie crust. I don't think this um, rest of it's gonna, gonna make enough for another one. And, uh, but maybe, maybe once I do the other, I'll have enough for it. So let me show you how to fill them. And uh, I'm gonna fill them all up. I'm probably gonna do 10 and um, maybe use the meat for a baked meat pie. All right, I got the meat mixture just off camera here. And what I'm gonna do is just take a spoonful of it and put it right there in the middle of this pie, just like that right there. And like I said, you can make these as big or as small as you wanna make them. And uh, some people call them pierogies, some people call them empanadas. Uh, around here, we call them meat pies, and this specifically recipe is Natchitoches meat pies. All right, and uh, then we're gonna roll it over like this, and we're going to take some water. Where's my water? Take some water and seal the edges with the water. Bring it over. Pack it as full as you want to, but make sure that you can get the edges down and lock them all in place like that and take a fork and kind of mash the edges together like this. There's one, I will get the others and we will drop them all into grease like that. All right, that is rapidly approaching uh, 350 and when it gets to 350, I'm gonna know that it's ready. This is my Thermalwork shelf alarm. I've got it sitting right over here on the back of the counter. It says 341 right now. And when it's at 350, we're gonna drop in these Natchitoches meat pies, which are traditionally fried in that uh, half moon shape, you know, like empanadas or something. I took the rest of the meat and two other pie crust and I put it in that uh, number eight skillet, uh, whatever kind of skillet it is. It's got a single notch on it. May or may not be lodged, who knows. Anyway, I'm just gonna bake a traditional meat pie, not Natchitoches style, but Natchitoches flavored, all right? Because it's not fried. I'll show you what that looks like. Of course, I could have made more. Now, the two pie crust I had in that one package made a dozen. 
I will say though, 11 of them are full size and that last one is little bitty and kind of looks more like a mini egg roll or a tiny chimichanga. Not really like a meat pie. All right, we are at 350. Just drop it in and let it fry. That's the first one you saw me make. Here's some others. Probably gonna do three or four at a time. Now, when they're ready, I'm gonna put them on uh, this thing. This is a device for cooking bacon in the microwave, but I usually like to put all my fried foods on there, put a piece of paper towel down and let it drip under this. You can just put it on a, a plate and a paper towel to let the uh, grease come off of it. All right, you wanna kinda of turn them over, make sure that the pie crust gets fried on both sides. Who doesn't like fried pies, man? Wow. And now can meat, that one come apart and I sealed it, it did nab it. All right, it doesn't take long. These three are ready. Drain them out of the grease. Set them on here. There they are. Looking nice. Let's do a few more. My grease temperature has gone down to 335, but that's still hot enough to fry these. I'm gonna see if I can get four of them in here at this time. And indeed I can. Right. Flip these over. Try not to break them. Come on, flip over, baby. Flip over. Woo, that's hot, man. Don't try that at home. I'm an untrained amateur. All right, these four are ready. I'm gonna go ahead and cook the other four off camera. And um, you get the point. Uh, actually, I got five more to cook. and uh, But we'll go ahead and do a taste test while I'm cooking them and um, in this video. And uh, at, at the end, I'll show you what that uh, baked pie looks like. That, like I said, that's not Natchitoches style, but I still think it's going to be pretty darn good, all right? So if you're not into deep frying, you might want to try it baked. That's what we have so far. All right. Do you remember how to spell Natchitoches? Hannah, you graduated from there. How do you spell Natchitoches? I honestly don't know if I can because I only ever text it. From the smart kids school, it's spelled just like it sounds. I'm going to write it on the screen right there. All right. Nakedish. N-A silent T. That's right. Like it sounds. Louisiana, French influence. We got a lot of silent T's running around. And then you got the C-H, like in chaos, not like in church's chicken. All right. And then you got the I that sounds like the O in women. Eh. All right. Then you got a T that sounds like the D in edit. And then you got an O that sounds like the I in fish, which is also like the O in women. All right. And then you got the CH that sounds like the sh in champagne. And then you got the E and S, which are silent, you know, like in Des Moines and Illinois and Arkansas. Yeah. Uh huh. Nakedish. Spelled just like it sounds. Nakedish meat pies. She's got a pretty one. Look at it. Look how pretty hers is. I gave her the, get the, right there, right there. See, she got the pretty one. All right, guys. Bacon one too, but that ain't really traditional Natchitoches meat pies. Like I said at the beginning, Hannah, say hi, Hannah. You hadn't said hi, hi Hannah. Yet. You didn't introduce me that way, so it didn't. Y'all know out. my daughter Hannah. Went to, graduated from Natchitoches. Say hi, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. All right. See how smart she is. She's brilliant. All right. You know, New York has cheesecake. Philly has cheesesteak. Natchitoches got meat pies. Doesn't rhyme, but they still are good. Oh, you already eating yours, child. Tell this segment you... has been so long. We gotta actually eat them, right? This whole video is so long. I'm long-winded. They are really good. It's a little bit different with the store-bought pie crust. That is really flaky. Um, they taste really good. I didn't actually eat a lot of meat pies when I was in Natchitoches. I ate a lot of ice cream and salads, so. I can season these the way I want to. The ones for the tourists can be a little mm -hmm. mild sometimes, unless you ask for the spicy ones. That's I real. have front street drawn on my shirt because the students at the school, a student drew this, and this was the senior shirt they decided on. So That's in Natchitoches. Natchitoches, mm -hmm. where they made uh, still magnolias. But it better if they called it cast iron magnolias. That Just wouldn't make any sense. It's cast iron Wednesday. It'd make perfect sense to me. This is really good, y'all. Y'all got to try it. Natchitoches meat pies. Say bye, Hannah. Bye, Hannah. Bye. <laughs>